I know I'm a little late on making this video, which I do apologize for. Um, I recently moved, which is why I haven't uploaded or streamed in a while, and I didn't have my PC or anything set up, but today I finally had a chance to. But I'm sure by now you've all heard the news of Akira Toriyama's passing, and I just wanted to make this video to, you know, talk about my journey with Dragon Ball, my experiences, and just kind of give my input on how big of an impact Akira Toriyama's creations have been to me. You know, I hope that he rests in peace and wherever he is now, he understands how big of an impact he made on not just my lives and the lives of his fans, but literally the lives of millions of people. Because even people outside of, you know, the Dragon Ball fandom or fans of other works of Toriyama have probably seen something within one of their favorite pieces of media that has referenced Dragon Ball mostly. Uh, there's like all kinds of stuff. Like I know like there's like Steven Universe has referenced it. Like a lot of American cartoons like you know Kids Next Door and that's not to mention even all the other mangaka that have come out like Kishimoto Oda like a bunch of mangaka have come out and said like Toriyama inspired them to make their work. So it's like without Toriyama there'd be so like I don't know where anime would even be at today because he inspired so many people and I hope wherever he is now that he was able to understand that now. Like, I hope that he sees that now and can rest peacefully knowing how big of an impact he's left on the world because, yeah, he is, he just touched the hearts and impacted the lives of millions. But I just wanted to give my story with all of this because I can remember. So, Dragon Ball has been in my life pretty much as long as I can remember. Like, the way I got into Dragon Ball initially was, so my older brother, he grew up watching Dragon Ball also, and at some point he ended up getting the DVDs for GT, and not even the the new like green box remastered DVDs for GT, he had like the original like Mark Menza score GT DVDs, and I even still have some of them to this day. And as a kid, I instantly fell in love with them. You can ask anyone like in my family, especially like my parents or my sisters, I would watch Dragon Ball constantly. Like we had a DVD player in the living room, I remember, or a CD player. And I would sit there, pop in a CD. I rem I can remember everything down to like the, the like the main menu music, you know, getting to skip to scenes and all that. You know how old CDs were. Um, but I would sit there all day just watching Dragon Ball. I could I've memorized the entire intro of Step Into the Grand Tour because I've watched GT that many times as a kid. Like I would sit there and watch nothing but that all day to the point where my parents because i would watch in the living room because you know that's where the cd player was but i did have my own room but you know obviously i didn't have a way to you know i didn't have a cd player in there or anything so my parents because i would basically hog up the living room all the time and you know would just be screaming the ha ah! for the gt intro they literally bought me my own tv with a cd player like attached to it so i could just go watch gt in my room and so i would I would literally constantly just watch GT. For me, like growing up, that was like the show I would watch. And again, I didn't have the entire collection of this of the CDs. My brother only had like, you know, a handful of them. But I would rewatch those episodes so many times. I had episodes from kind of just sprinkled throughout the entire series. I know I didn't have much of the baby saga, but I had like pretty much all the Shadow Dragon saga. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta especially was like mind blowing to me because that was like the pinnacle of GT, in my opinion. And to this day, fun fact about me, Gogeta remains my favorite character in all of Dragon Ball. Not not specifically Super Saiyan 4, but just Gogeta in general. And there's actually another detail of why. Like, it's not just GT. There's another reason, but we'll get to that. But, yeah, I had a bunch of different pieces of GT. And so I would just sit there watching them over and over again. And just, you know, I just love Dragon Ball so much, even as a kid. Like, Super Saiyan 4, I'm pretty sure I had the episode where Goku first transforms to Super Saiyan 4. I remember Vegeta going Super Saiyan 4 for the first time. Just every everything, so much of Dragon Ball. I had a little bit of the Baby Saga, but not all of it. Like, there was a, some stuff that I know for sure I hadn't seen originally. I've since gone back and watched all of GT, you know, so I've, I've seen everything now. But, yeah, that's that's what got me started on Dragon Ball. But the other thing, too, is my dad had a PSP. And on there... He had Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai. So that was the other game or the other form of media that got me deeper into Dragon Ball because um, the reason I brought up, you know, how Gogeta is my favorite character, if y'all don't know, because I actually recently went back and played Shin Budokai because it had been forever since I played and I have a PS Vita. 
So I actually got Shin Budokai again, and it made me realize Shin Budokai is literally Fusion Reborn the game. So uh, now I'm thinking like, well, no wonder I like Gogeta so much. It was literally the pin like the peak of Shin Budokai was Gogeta. Vegito too. I will I will admit it was Vegito too. But then on top of that, I had GT, which the pinnacle of GT is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. So it's like, no wonder I like Gogeta so much, you know. But yeah, so that that was what started my journey on Dragon Ball. And then after that, growing up, because you know, playing Shin Budokai and stuff, obviously it wasn't GT, but as a kid, I didn't really know like the difference and stuff. I just knew it was Dragon Ball, so I was playing it and having fun. But obviously there was stuff like Teen Gohan, like Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan. There was like Cell. Cell and Freeze I actually did know because they are in GT. I have that. I remember that episode where Goku goes down to hell. But obviously I didn't know, I didn't have any context for who these people were. But then what happened is Dragon Ball Z Kai came out on Nicktoons and I watched every episode of Kai. I remember initially Kai actually only went up to the Cell Saga and would stop. I actually, I was aware of the Boo Saga, I believe, because, you know, obviously Boo was in, um, uh, was in Shin Budokai also. And I remember, like, looking up after, you know, when Kai was airing and it stopped at Cell, I was like, well, hold on a second, where's Boo? And then I looked up, there's a whole other Boo Saga and everything. So, uh, I never actually got, like, um, you know, obviously, originally, it just stopped at Cell and then it would just restart. But, you know, me, I was watching all the Kai episodes over and over. Like, I didn't care. It was Dragon Ball, and I got to consume it. And so for me, my first exposure to Z was Kai. And I, after, because, you know, the Boo Saga wasn't a thing for Kai until much more recently, like, I forget which year, but I, it was a lot more recently when they finally did Dragon Ball Z Kai, the final chapters dubbed. And that's when I finally, well, no, no, no. Before that, because the Boo Saga wasn't in Kai, you know, after, you know, looking more into Dragon Ball, especially because, you know, I had, internet access and everything researching stuff i found out that kai was actually a remake of the original z so then i went back and watched the original z from beginning to end just because you know i love dragon ball and you know i uh well you know i, I didn't mind re-watching the episodes again because normally even now when i watch anime like let's say I, an anime ends and then i go jump to the manga to finish it i usually don't go back to the beginning of the manga i just go from where the anime left off but for Dragon Ball, it was different. I did not mind rewatching those episodes, especially because I found out it was like the original dub. The voices were a little different and stuff. So I went back and rewatched Z. And then, you know, that's that was just, you know, so I could get to the Boo Saga because I had not seen it. And then, of course, I finally saw the Boo Saga. And I was like, it was so hype, especially like the Spirit Bomb at the end, which it remains to this day one of my favorite moments in all of Dragon Ball, that Spirit Bomb at the end. But um you know watching that and then you know seeing ultimate gohan and then all this stuff at the end of z and everything it was just it was so exciting and then after that i find out oh there's actually a whole series about when goku was a kid because then i believe i was introduced to kid goku through budokai 3 because i had the xbox 360 growing up and they released the budokai hd collection and they had kid goku in there so i was like oh there's a kid goku was a kid at some point so i looked into that and that's when i found out about the original dragon ball and I, you know, eventually went and watched all of that, too, because I was like, oh, I've never seen this. I need to watch it, you know? Um, yeah, so, like, you know, I had gotten through everything with Dragon Ball at that point because I was just that invested in the series just from watching GT, mind you. Like, GT, now after I've seen everything, I wouldn't even say GT is, like, my favorite part of the series, but because of the nostalgia it holds and everything and just growing up with it and remembering the feelings I felt watching the episodes, I, like... I can't say I hate GT because it just it holds too much sentimental value for me personally because even when I watched GT and Kai because because once Kai was airing that was when you know I was getting into like elementary school and stuff and so I would talk to people about Dragon Ball constantly like every person I met I was like have you seen Dragon Ball and then the people that did wa see Dragon Ball that I knew like man we talked for hours like that's that was like the one thing I would talk about constantly was Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Dragon Ball to the point where even one of my friends in elementary school actually gave me one of his cds of z because i had a oh that's another thing like that's something else i just remembered actually my first introduction to z was i had two movies i had super android 13 and the return of cooler uh you know the meta cooler movie i had those two on on cd i had forgotten about them yeah like there's so much dragon ball in my life that i might not be getting these the timeline of events exactly right but overall like the like, you know me getting into shin budokai and then you know buddha you know the Budokai HD games and all that like all of that is true like that's all happened it's just you know I might not remember the exact order but I did I just remember that I did have Android 13 
and Return of Cooler. So that was another thing that, like, I had seen some of Z, but I didn't know, like, how this connected to, like, later on, you know, Super Saiyan 4. Like, I, I kind of figured out that, like, the two movies did come before GT. I just did it. You know, I hadn't actually watched all of Z until Kayak happened, and then I watched it then, and yeah, so... Anyways, though, just to get back to the point, you know, then I watched all of, you know, OG Dragon Ball, and yeah, since then I've just been in love with Dragon Ball. And then you can imagine, you know, again, because even... Because up till then, there hadn't really been any new Dragon Ball content for a while. Like, GT was the newest thing, and then eventually we got Battle of Gods. I remember Battle of Gods, though... I actually didn't know Battle of Gods came out originally, so I didn't see it in theaters because, you know, it, it was ba- I was barely getting into, like, the Dragon Ball community online and stuff, like, YouTubers. Like, I remember eventually I got introduced to, like, Rhyme Style because I watched a lot of Minecraft YouTubers as a kid, and he did his Dragon Block C series with XRPMX13. That's how I got introduced to Rhyme Style, and then I went to his channel and realized, oh, he does Dragon Ball content and stuff, so... Eventually, I got introduced to him, and I remember he did, like, Battle of Z videos and stuff, and that was how I found out about Battle of Gods, because, you know, I see Battle of Z, and then there's, like, God Goku and stuff, I'm like, what is this? So then I look it up, I'm like, wait, they dropped a new Dragon Ball movie? I didn't know that. So I ended up going to watch it, and I, you can imagine my excitement for a whole new Dragon Ball movie. I was like, what? Especially because I didn't know about it. I was like, there, there's new content? You know, because I, eventually I did learn about Yo Son Goku and his friend's return and had watched that. But that was just like, you know, a little special. It was nice to see something new, but getting this whole new movie was different. And Battle of Gods, I love that so much. Because again, you can imagine my excitement with how deep, deeply invested I was into Dragon Ball. And then, you know, after that, we ended up, because, you know, Battle of Gods, it was just that one movie. And I was like, dang, I wish we had like a new anime or something, like something I could really keep watching. But I, I was honestly excited that we had something new. And then they announced Resurrection F. And that movie, because at this point when Resurrection F came out, I was subscribed to like Rhyme Style and more YouTubers in the Dragon Ball sphere. So that movie, I found out about it like when the trailer came out. I was like, oh, okay, Resurrection F, I'm going to see that. Like I asked my parents, I was like, hey, there's this new Dragon Ball movie coming out. Can I go see it? And I, my dad was like, yeah. And even let me bring some friends, like two of my friends who were into Dragon Ball. We all went to go see Resurrection F together in theaters. And that was my very first theater experience with Dragon Ball. And I will never forget it. Like, as, say whatever you want about Resurrection F, how good or bad it was. To me, I will never hate on that movie just because of the... Again, my first ex- theatrical experience with Dragon Ball was Resurrection F. And it was like... I can't even put into words just how exciting and how hype and invigorating it was. It was like a whole different feeling I had it felt. Like, you know, it's one thing to, like, you know, have a bunch of friends around you and, like, have you know, that are into Dragon Ball, like, talking to your friends and stuff, but being in a theater, a room full of people who are also into the series, being hype about the same things I'm hype about, man, it was, it was, oh my god, it was such a different experience, and, you know, we get Super Saiyan Blue and all of that, it was, it was just, you know, we got a new form, Frieza comes back, who was my favorite villain at this point, because, you know, I had seen Kai and everything, Frieza was my favorite villain, we get a movie with Frieza coming back, and we get, you know, his song, like, the tua, 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 you know, that, that, and just so, everything, about Resurrection F. Again, just the theatrical version of it because, you know, next what happens, obviously, is we get Dragon Ball Super. And again, you can imagine my hype being like, what, Dragon Ball's getting a new anime? Oh my gosh. Like, it was so exciting. Even though, like, you know, obviously the first two arcs of Super, it was just recapping Battle of Gods, Resurrection F. I, I didn't mind. I was like, hey, I get to watch Dragon Ball every Saturday. And believe me, I was, I was there for every episode on every Saturday. I watched every single episode. And like, when it came out in Japan, I... I didn't even wait for the dub. I had watched it in Japanese online. You know, I found places to watch it. And every Saturday, I was there for the new Dragon Ball Super episode. Li- literally just every single Saturday. But yeah, so you can imagine how hype I was, especially when we got to, like, you know, the new stuff with Universe 6 versus Universe 7. Oh, my God. Like, it was just... Dragon Ball Super, again, is another one that holds a special place for me to this day because it's like... You know, I had been so into Dragon Ball as a kid, and then we finally get a new anime, and I'm like, I was so there for it. Like, oh my god, it's just so hype. And then I, specifically, another thing I remember is, I'm sure every Dragon Ball fan has, talks about this, but you know, the UI Goku episode, UI Omen versus Jiren, when that episode was literally crashing every website on the internet. Like, it was crashing Crunchyroll, like all the official websites, like Crunchyroll, Funimation, all that, but even unofficial websites like the pirated websites were crashing i think even like the hub you know p hub that was crashing it was it was so crazy i remember i actually couldn't even watch that episode the day it came out 
uh because you know i had been up all night like waiting to watch that episode but i couldn't find a website that was working so i had to wait till the next day which was a sunday to actually finally watch the episode because it it was that bad so many people were crashing all the websites like it truly broke the internet because like it, which it's just crazy to me that the pirated websites were even crashing but yeah and then obviously another thing that i got super into was a lot of the games growing up you know i had i had a lot of more games than i mentioned like not just budokai shin budokai budokai 3 those were the two i had originally but then i ended up branching out more you know got um budokai tenkaichi 3 on the wii i have i still have that to this day i got the raging blast the raging blast games i got burst limit like a bunch of these other games i oh another game i forgot to bring up as a child is this is a very this is one game i don't hear anyone talk about but dragon ball gt transformation on the game boy i still have that game and like that game it wasn't like the greatest game i won't lie but it, again for me it's dragon ball i'm there <laughs> like that's all it takes it's dragon ball i'm there for it but uh yeah but then i got into you know more of the games and stuff but what really captured me what the dragon ball game that got me the most was xenoverse xenoverse one i dumped countless hours into xenoverse one like that was the game I would play constantly like, like the budokai games i did play a lot and even like got all the tro the trophies or achievements on xbox and everything but xenoverse was different i was dumping if i had free time it was going into xenoverse and then you know i got my friends into xenoverse because you know i knew people who were into dragon ball still and i was like y'all this new dragon ball game's dropping it's xenoverse it's like a new 3d arena fighter it looks so good at the time like xenoverse to me was like the best looking dragon ball game we'd ever gotten i was like oh my god you know i gotta play it so i dumped countless hours into xenoverse one and like going back to play that game now it's so jarring because like now it controls so jankily but i think it's just because you know we've got xenoverse 2 and that's the thing too like when xenoverse 2 came out you can imagine as much as i love xenoverse 1 xenoverse 2 i've also dumped countless hours into i have all of the dlc um i remember a specific story for xenoverse 2 is when i because you know they finally added transformations for other races besides like potential unleashed and kaioken so specifically i made my freezer race character and you know there's a bunch of missions and stuff you have to do to unlock gold like the golden form i stayed up until like four or like four or five a.m purely just to get the golden form i was like i'm not turning the game off until i get the golden form because i just i wanted to play with it that badly and you know it just kept going for hours and hours and hours until eventually you know i did get the golden form and i was like i could sleep but i didn't even go to sleep right away because i was like well now that i got it i gotta play with it so I stayed up a little longer just messing with the four and i was like oh my gosh it's so cool that you could go golden and everything just oh my gosh and then even to this day like xenoverse gets new dlc there's another dlc that should be coming out soon and everything it's just you know even to this day i still love xenoverse like i don't play it as much as i used to now because i feel like at this point i'm just ready for a new game like i feel like i've basically done all there is to do in xenoverse besides like the new con like you know obviously when they add in like new dlc story and stuff i definitely go back and play that but in terms of like content i feel like i've done all there is to do like they do still do raids and stuff here and there or like every every week or so but it's like it's gotten repetitive to me so i just feel like for me i'm done everything there is to do in xenoverse and then fighters i also did play a good amount but i never got super competitive or super deep into fighters like i was definitely way deeper into xenoverse one and two but fighters i still i would say now after xenoverse 2's lifespans kind of fizzled out i've played fighters more now like that's the dragon ball game i play the most probably uh besides the mobile games like i haven't even talked about like, getting it to dokkan and legends because i was there for when it comes to dokkan i was there like maybe a month or two after it came out on global that that i've been playing dokkan since then and then legends i was there when you could when you played the when they had people register for the alpha version i played the alpha version of legends but i do play dokkan a lot more Dokkan's just more of my pace because, you know, you can play it in the background while you're doing other stuff. And then Legends, I still have fun with it, but I get shafted a lot in Legends. But, again, another Dragon Ball thing that I was like, I'm playing it day one. <laughs> you know, like, I've been into it since the beginning. And, um, yeah, j just, you know, that's basically, like, what my journey with Dragon Ball is. And it's like, you know, I bring all that up. Like, I know I yapped here for, like, 20 minutes, but I bring it all up just to say, like, this was something i was super deep into like dragon ball to me is just like an important part of my life it's like i don't think i would even be the person i am today without dragon ball because it's just again look at how deep into it i was as a kid and even now as an adult like i still play kakarot like i've been streaming kakarot on the channel for example i've done all of it obviously i haven't streamed the newest dlc yet which i'm going to soon don't worry but 
I haven't streamed that because, you know, I didn't have my PC and stuff set up. But every other DLC, like, go look back at my Kakarot playthrough. I streamed the entire game, including the DLCs, like, when they dropped. So, again, I am just super into Dragon Ball. And to this day, it continues to be a major part of my life. But even outside of just the the, the uh, content that Dragon Ball is releasing, you know, like the anime, the games, it's just connected me to so many people. Like, one of my best friends to this day, someone I still talk to, like, on a daily basis now, I only met him because I was playing Xenoverse two with some of my other friends that i knew from like middle school right and one of my friends invited this you know he was like hey i want you to fight my friend in this game because you know at the time he was like my friend was like hey you're pretty good at xenoverse i want you to fight my other friend so i specifically remember i was using super gogeta because that's another thing when xenoverse 2 dropped i was so excited that super gogeta was actually in the game i was kind of disappointed when he wasn't in xenoverse 1 but we had super saiyan 4 gogeta at least so i mained him but then they dropped Super Gogeta in Xenoverse 2. Man, it was it was over. I learned everything with him. But I remember, you know, I was just like basically bodying my friend with Super Gogeta. But after that day, me and him just started talking even more. And like he, you know, knew a lot about Dragon Ball. I knew a lot about Dragon Ball. And from there, we've just been talking ever since. And it was like Dragon Ball just, you know, was a major part of that. And even in middle school, there was a lot of people I met through just liking Dragon Ball. I even got a couple other people into like Dokkan and stuff, for example, because I knew about Dokkan. For me, I was kind of like the one guy that people went to when it came to new information because I was so deep into like the fandom online that anytime there was new new information, I knew about it. Like a new game came out, I knew and I would tell all my friends about it and they'd get into it. And again, one of my other friends to this day, he's been playing Dokkan for basically as long as I have and we still talk about Dokkan every day. Like, oh, who do you think the new unit's going to be? Like, is it going to be a new... Like even this like upcoming Saiyan day for Dokkan, we're like, is it going to be a new Vegeta? Is it going to be a new Goku? Like we talk about Dragon Ball to this day. And to me, it's just, again, it's just such a beautiful thing. You know, like I've met so many people and, you know, I've grown, like there's so much about Dragon Ball that has just impacted me as a person. You know, I've met so many of my closest friends to this day because of Dragon Ball. I've gotten some other people like that I also was friends with outside of Dragon Ball. I've gotten them into Dragon Ball and they like Dragon Ball now. I got my girlfriend into Dragon Ball. It's just like it's just been such an important part of my childhood and my adulthood. You know, like it continues to be important today. Like you know I was there day one when the Broly movie dropped. And then Superhero, I got a whole group of my friends and we all went to go watch Superhero together. And it's like, you know, dra- like to me Dragon Ball is like just the biggest franchise that i'm into because like to me dragon ball say what you want about like the anime or the story or whatever like yes you can say there's other anime out there that have deeper stories or like i dragon ball story isn't that good to me it's not even about the anime it's not about the story like i do love the story don't get me wrong but what it's more about is the franchise like dragon ball like look at what we have look dragon ball games have become like staple games that people play like look at sparking zero look at how hyped people were were behind the announcement of sparking zero because even people who weren't dragon ball fans grew up playing like budokai tenkaichi 3 with their friends and you know even back then dragon ball games it's like even if you weren't into dragon ball it's like dragon ball games were just the standard games you know like you wanted to play like a a fighting game people probably had budokai or budokai tenkaichi 3 so just look at the hype behind sparking zero and then just everything else we have like you know dragon ball's got the anime um we had two movies come out broly and superhero and they're the best selling like they're the best selling anime movies almost ever and then we've got you know there was like a dragon ball concert like i think it was called the dragon ball symphonic adventure that was like a live concert that they had for dragon ball we've got a card game like an actual official physical card game and they actually just dropped the digital version we've got you know fighters which is like an actual 2d fighting game um look at like just all the different merch there is for dragon ball and then look there's a whole event called like dragon ball games battle hour where it's literally a whole event just purely dedicated to the games and like announcements there's an official app now for dragon ball where there's just news on there it's just like to me no other franchise does it like dragon ball in terms of franchising you know all of the things surrounding dragon ball that we get it just makes me so happy to be part of like the community and you know, like, look, we're about to get a new anime. We're about to get Dragon Ball Daima. And it's, like, all all this stuff. Like, there's always something new with Dragon Ball. Like, something major and new. Like, I'm sure... Like, honestly, all Dragon Ball's missing at this point is, like, a theme park. Which, honestly, wouldn't even surprise me if we get a Dragon Ball theme park at some point. And it's just, like... You know, even people who aren't into Dragon Ball... Like, my parents, they were never super into Dragon Ball. But they all know Goku. Everybody knows who Goku is. Even if you're not a Dragon Ball fan. Even if you don't like anime. You know who Goku is. Like, you've at least seen him before. 
especially with you know the resurgence during you know when dragon ball super came back like when dragon ball super was an anime like when that got animated for the first time it's just like to me it's just i'm always so excited to see what's next with dragon ball and it's just this beautiful thing that toriyama created you know it's like i've even gone deep into like you know learning about things that happened during the process of like writing the manga for example like you know details like you know the fact super saiyan in the manga the only reason it's like blonde in the anime is because toriyama didn't ink in didn't want to ink in the hair he wanted to make it easier so he gave goku this form where he didn't have to ink in the hair and he was like oh it's a lighter color and it's just all these little details about dragon ball and again like i said just the franchising like there's the manga the card game there's multiple you know even to this day we're still getting new games like sparking zero is about to drop we've gotten kakarot and then each game we've gotten too like look at breakers kakarot xenoverse they're all so very very different like we have so many different genres of games within dragon ball and then we've got you know all of like you know we got the two mobile games that are doing super well like every major celebration they hit like top grossing in the app stores and stuff uh like i said we have the official accounts like we have an actual app that's just purely there to be dragon ball news like there's so much stuff when it comes to dragon ball it's, to me again like i just can't thank toriyama enough for creating something this beautiful because again not only was dragon ball there to like connect me to like a lot of my closest friends but it was like also times in my life where things were like dark for me you know i was just in a really bad mental space dragon ball was always there i could just watch dragon ball and get excited even if it was just for the moments while i'm watching i could just be excited for something just constantly like again even if i was re-watching episodes like there's episodes of gt that no matter how many times i watch them to me they're still just as hype and exciting as they were initially and Again, all of this to say just thank you so much to Toriyama for creating something so massive, something so impactful for my life and, again, the lives of everyone around me and even just all over the world. Like, everywhere I go, it's like I see Dragon Ball. I love it so much. Like, at least the way I structure my life, I guess, I'm always seeing anything new with Dragon Ball, getting people into Dragon Ball because it's just something I'm so passionate about, you know? That's why even on my channel, like, I've played... Kakara, I was doing a whole series for Xenoverse. Some of my oldest video, like I think my first video was a Xenoverse video. Um, it's just yeah, like I, I just love Dragon Ball so much, and it's it's important to me. And even now, like I've been starting to get into some of Toriyama's other works, like Sandland, for example, is a big thing that just happened. Like they had a movie, there's a game coming out, and now they're making an animated series for it too. And I'm gonna be there for that. It's just just this, this this thing toriyama created was just so awesome and like i could sit here talking about like dragon ball forever like i could sit here and talk about it forever i'm trying to keep it short it's already been like 30 minutes but i've been trying to keep this shorter because i could literally go off like we haven't even gotten into like some of my favorite moments in this series like obviously i'm not going to get super deep into that because this video will be like three hours long if i went into detail about my favorite moments and everything but you know it's just dragon ball to this day continues to be this major part of my life that like i it's never going to go away like no no matter what anyone says dragon ball is always going to be the biggest part of my life like, if there's a new movie i'm seeing it day one there's a new anime i'm watching it even if there's no english episodes and that's the other thing with super too i rewatched all of super when the dub came out because it was airing i believe on cartoon network and yeah i rewatched all of the dub version of super too so it's like to me, Dragon Ball, like I said, it's not even just about the anime, which, again, don't get me wrong, I love the anime, love the manga, love the story. It's definitely, like, the greatest of manga creative of all time, but for me, it's not even just because of what's in the pages or what's shown in the episodes, it's everything surrounding it. Like, even look at, you know, there's been so much stuff I've been seeing. Like, one major thing was in Argentina, you know, hearing about Toriyama's passing, everyone, like, they had, like, you can see the video, there's, like, thousands of people gathered outside to make a spirit bomb in honor of Toriyama and to me it's just things like that are so beautiful it's just like what other franchise do you know that gathers people together like like this much you know that that brings people together to just have a common topic to talk about where you know everyone's just so passionate about this one thing and it's just so beautiful you know like even like like there was events where you know Sean Schemmel was there I, I forget which event it was but it was an event where you know the Sean Schemmel at this like it was like a convention and the thing they did there is had all of the audience gather up and do a Kamehameha together. And it's like, again, what other series is doing it like Dragon Ball, man? Like, you know, 
not to rag on any other anime, but you know, you can love One Piece, Naruto, all these other anime as much as you want. You could say the anime and the story is better than Dragon Ball. I'll give you that. But none of no other anime is as big as Dragon Ball. You know, it's, it's just a fact. You know, no other anime has had the such a widespread impact the way Dragon Ball has, and I don't know if another anime ever will. Like to this day, there's anime coming out like Jujutsu Kaisen, for example. That anime had references to Dragon Ball within it, and it's just, yeah. Like I, again, I don't think I'd be the person I am today, or I've gotten to the point in life that I have without Dragon Ball, which I know might sound dramatic to some people. Like, oh, it's just a cartoon, it's just a show. But I think that a lot of people who have also, because I've heard so many stories of a, so many people talking about how much they've also been in, impacted by Dragon Ball, I think they'll understand. Like, just go, just even if you're not into Dragon Ball, maybe I'm not expecting too many people to see this video, but if this is the first video you're seeing of someone talking about Toriyama, just go look up Akira Toriyama on YouTube and you're going to see thousands of videos of people just talking about, you know, their, their experiences of Dragon Ball and how much it's impacted them. And I think you'll understand that this is bigger than just a cartoon. No, it's bigger than just some show. I've even seen YouTubers who haven't uploaded in years come back because, you know, they heard of Toriyama's passing and they felt like they needed to make a video because they're that passionate about the series. And I'm in the same boat. I was like, I want to talk about my experience with Dragon Ball, put my hat in the ring too, just to have my story be out there too. I'm in the sea of millions of stories about Toriyama. I wanted mine out there just to, you know, really hammer in how important Dragon Ball is to people. And... You know, a lot of it's, you know, I can't even imagine the things his family, because I know Toriyama had a son, a daughter, I believe, and he had, you know, a wife, and I can't imagine what they must be going through, or, or anyone that was close to him. Like, I can't imagine the things that they've been going through, but I hope that they know the legacy he left behind will never be forgotten. You know, and the, when it comes to, you know, Dragon Ball and Sandland and all these other manga that he's created, but especially Dragon Ball, with the influence it's had on all of media, not even just anime. Like I was mentioning at the beginning, like Western cartoons have referenced Dragon Ball. It's just this just such a widespread impact Dragon Ball has had and it's it's beautiful. And I hope they know his work and his legacy I don't think will ever be forgotten for as long as like humanity lives. I think somewhere down the line there will be something referencing his work, no matter what, you know. Uh, yeah his legacy will never be forgotten and honestly all i can hope now is you know an another thing when it comes to dragon ball like dragon ball Daima or like superhero for example those are the two most recent projects it's my firm belief that those were only able to be as fun and as creative as they well for Daima, i haven't actually seen it yet but as they're looking to be because of toriyama's vision like Daima, just seeing the trailers it's very much like a love letter and a call back like a like a return to form with the original manga like the og dragon ball you know where goku's a kid it's very much going back to the roots of dragon ball which those are some of the best parts of dragon ball in my opinion because it's such a a mystical world there you know there's this sense of adventure and mysticism that you don't get in the later parts of the series as much but daima looks like we're going back to that and i'm so excited for it but it's to me it's only possible because of toriyama's touch you know he that's his world that was his vision for things because look at what happened when we got you know just the companies making dragon ball that, then we got stuff like gt where you know again i uh, gt does hold a special place to my heart but in terms of like how much it honored like the original series and felt like like how much it felt like the original manga toriyama wrote it was like night and day gt does not feel like the rest of dragon ball in my opinion at least like gt is very different in many ways than the rest of the series um but then you, again, like you go back to the original Dragon Ball, there's always a sense of journey and mysticism. We're seeing more of the world and stuff too. Like even, you know, Toriyama designed like these new monsters and stuff. And they're so, the designs are so Toriyama, you know? And there's just, you know, the sense of mysticism. And even in Superhero, you know, it was more focused on, you know, Gohan and Piccolo. While there, like there was a lot of like the, you know, the key blast, the action and all of that. But when we look at like Pan, for example, her character, I feel like that was very much a Toriyama touch because it's like, and even just a lot of the more lighthearted scenes in the movie, I feel like was very much Toriyama. Like, like, for example, we got to actually see Piccolo's house. You know, that's something that we had not gotten in Dragon Ball, and I don't think would have ever happened without Toriyama really digging, 
like putting his hands into this into this movie you know and like directing it more and i know daima there's been interviews with toriyama where daima toriyama said was the first time in a while where he was actually like really in there like helping with every little detail like the scripting and everything so i think daima is going to be a beautiful series you know i think daima is going to be a beautiful anime and i can only hope now that whatever happens with dragon ball they just honor that legacy and make things as close to toriyama's vision as they possibly can like i know those series might be going to like we don't know what's going to happen from here on out like it could go to toyotaro he's the manga writer right now there is also akio yoku who is like basically he was known as toriyama's right hand man and he i don't know if y'all knew but there's actually and this is another thing with how big dragon ball is there's an official company in japan now called capsule corporation and right now they're the ones handling dragon ball like the the anime and stuff they're the ones doing it and it was this guy akio yoku split off from like shueisha and made his own company and called it capsule corp like what other anime do you know that has like an official like legal company named after something within the series like nothing <laughs> like there's nothing that's just directly named after something from this fictional world you know we have a an actual company like a legal company somewhere you can get a job at named after something in dragon ball like no other series does that and it's just again crazy how big of a franchise it is. but yeah when it comes to the series though i can only hope i know toyotaro like i think the two people who deserve it the most are toyotaro and akio yoku because yoku was the reason we got like you know stuff like beast gohan is like a thing now and like orange piccolo he's the one who kind of is more in touch with like the western fans and like yeah we know that they like all this cool stuff so let's put that in there like without him probably wouldn't have gotten as much like a much of these cool things like beast and stuff i know he was i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly he was like basically directly responsible for beast becoming a thing but i do think that toyotaro and akio yoku are the two people who deserve it the most because they've been like the the big names within the within the series or like the within the brand uh like as of late they've been like the two big names so I know Toyotaro is also like was basically literally Toriyama's apprentice and Akio Yoku was known as his right hand man. I think they both deserve the series as much as like more than anyone. But you know, again, all of this to say just rest in peace, Toriyama. I wanted to just share my story about my journey with Dragon Ball and how it's affected my life. And you know, even on this channel, you're gonna see Dragon Ball's not going anywhere, you know. Like, I'm sorry, but Dragon Ball will always be a part of this channel, part of my life. It's something I'm just so passionate about that I can never not talk about it. Because the whole reason I made this channel was just to give myself a platform to, you know, play Dragon Ball games, connect with people who like Dragon Ball, and just get to talk about Dragon Ball as well as my other interests, of course. Don't get me wrong. Like, there's other games that I've played on the channel, like Delta Root and stuff, but. Dragon Ball was definitely one of the biggest things that I wanted to give myself a space to talk about. But. Yeah, that's that's basically everything for me though. I again, I just really hope Toriyama knows how impactful and how beautiful a franchise he has made here. Dragon Ball will forever be, you know, will forever be huge. Like no matter, no matter what, Dragon Ball will always be to my, in my opinion, the best franchise ever made. You know, there's just so much to it. Again, we literally have an actual company named after something in Dragon Ball come on <laughs> it's just crazy toriyama's impact has just been huge there's no one else does it like dragon ball no one else has done it like toriyama you know and it is very unfortunate that he died at such a young age too you know he, he was only 68 which is not very old at all like look at like masako nozawa she's like like 80 something like 80 plus you know the vo the japanese voice actress for goku he is way older than toriyama was and it's it's just it was just way too soon but yeah that's pretty much it for me and yeah thank you so much Territory. rest in peace